It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. He's Eric Harley. He has the night off, the morning off. Technically, this is morning, right? Or not third shift. We're first shift. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Wow, what a day it uh, it uh, it has been. Uh, by the way, Eric, not sick or anything, just uh, on assignment, as he said last night. So um, just get right into it because there's so many things. Uh, that have been uh, that have been going on. Of course, uh, the the Trump trial and uh, the jury deliberating now. Wow. Let me start off the show. I, I, I want to play this because if if you're now just starting to pay attention, all right, we're going to show you what the problem is. And and this was an interview with uh, with uh, Andrew McCarthy. Uh, Andrew McCarthy uh, was on Fox News yesterday, a Fox News contributor. Uh, Andrew McCarthy, not a Trump fan, just so people know, not a Trump fan. In fact, most of the the legal sources, the vast majority of the legal sources that we have used, and I'll say 95% or more, are people who don't like Trump or are Democrats and have been lifelong liberals that understand the law. As we've talked about before, if you look at Jonathan Turley or Alan Dershowitz or Andrew McCarthy, who really have gone in to the minutia of the legalities of this particular trial, none of them, because we have used them the vast majority of, of the time because they talk the legal issues here, not the political issues. None of them are Trump fans. None will vote for Trump. And so the, the the reason is, number one, uh, you have now, as, as we have stated, some of the best people promoting the Constitution and how it has been used against Donald Trump and some of those who are most against what the Biden administration and the left has done on censoring and climate change all just a few years ago. Well, not all, but the vast majority that are being used by conservative media because they are the most vocal are all former Democrats. You know, the interesting thing is sometimes <laughs> as, 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 you, uh, as you see, for, for example, some of the, some of the best people And Eric and I have always wanted this. Some of the people that understand the Constitution better are people that came here and became citizens than people that were actually born and raised here. And some of the most, as we've talked about uh, when we talk about liberal blacks, uh, the, the identity politics that comes from the Democratic Party, the racism that comes from them, and then the Black Congressional Caucus, which is way to the left. But you will find some of the most passionate conservatives, black conservatives, but just articulating conservative I- ideals. Many are black who have left the Democrat Party and are furious with what liberalism has done. And the same here in this case. I want to play Andrew McCarthy because he sort of lays out what happened yesterday and why this is so unjust. The judge said that the jury has to unanimously believe that Donald Trump committed a crime in order to convict him, but they do not need to unanimously agree on what that crime was. And and, and in what world does that work? Not in any world I've ever been in, John. The you know what makes what makes a criminal prosecution appropriate in the sense of taking somebody's liberty away 
the array of constitutional protections we've had, we have. I've always understood them in 20 years of prosecuting cases and then more years than I care to count analyzing them. I've always understood that to mean every crime has a set of essential elements and what the jury has to be unanimous on is that the governments prove the elements beyond a reasonable doubt. It's to me, it's an essential element of that case. It's of this case, it's the most essential element of the count that they find this other crime because the only reason we're here is because Bragg used that other crime to inflate what would otherwise be a misdemeanor mm -hmm. into a felony that allowed him to escape the statute of limitations. So the thought that they don't have to be unanimous on that makes no sense to me constitutionally. Of course it, it doesn't. I was just reading here uh, this, uh, okay, actually yesterday morning from, uh, from Mark Levin, uh, the judge directed the jury that they can choose among three areas of crimes to convict the former president, violations of federal election law, which no one in that courtroom is familiar with. And the judge specifically prevented uh, the Federal Elections Commission witness, Brad Smith, from testifying about it, the falsification of business records and tax violations. Of course, the issue for all of the above is the requirement of criminal intent. Furthermore, the idea the jurors can pick one of the three and they don't have uh, to unanimously agree on which of the three is just another shocking development. Moreover, the federal campaign violation has still not been defined. I don't believe the tax violation has been defined. What, what was where? Where is the tax violation for Trump? I don't know where that is. Also, the falsification of business uh, 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 records, <laughs> they never proved that case. And so it's really incredible. And then when you see what well, was over 50 page of jury instructions that the jury can't take in with them, it's almost as if we just want to throw so much at this jury, make it so general, but make it so hard because I believe they've come back twice now in just a couple of hours saying we need you need to explain the jury instructions to us and the judge is going to read them again tomorrow they won't why wouldn't a judge in a case in any case where you believe that you you need to give them 50 pages of jury instructions that you don't allow the jury to have that in the jury room it's almost as if you're attempting to confuse them but as eric uh first said a few weeks back you know the judge is lying the judge is lying to the jury, and the judge lied to the jury yesterday. And how is he lying to the jury? Because he's, n number one, he is not explaining to them what the law actually is. He's lying about the law. And everybody was just blown away saying, my God, they're actually looking at this, that, you know, the, that, that a state jury can convict a president on a federal crime. I mean, it's just, it's mind-boggling what's going on here. But I thought the one of the interesting points that was brought up yesterday, and I want to just start off on this because I thought this was just, the uh, you know, fascinating. And that was uh, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank that had a lot to say on it, saying he's overseas and people look at the United States now going, what the hell is going on over there? And... We have said if there's a guilty, if there's a, if, if there's a guilty verdict on this, then welcome to Banana Republic, United States. Uh, this is going to be overturned, but the whole thing is, is to prosecute and keep the opposition candidate from campaigning. That's what's going on. And if you can get a jury, eh, maybe you can throw them in jail, and then there's some type of emotional satisfaction that the left has on it. But what O'Leary said was, because this is really interesting, because when you look at it, the Supreme Court right now, and we brought this up, what was it, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago? But the Supreme Court, you know, the immunity case is before them. What immunity does the president have? And obviously, the precedent that you've looked at, we've all looked at, is the president has immunity when it comes to anything that he does relating to the office of the presidency and anything that surrounds it. 
I forgot what the exact legal language is from the precedent that has been that has been set before. But this Supreme Court, they're looking at what's going on right now. And one of the reasons that that law exists is because you know that everybody would be filing every type of lawsuit against the president because the president makes a ton of decisions. And so if it was related to what they did in office, nobody would want to be president. But when you look at what's going on here, what people look at and say, we never thought that this would happen in the United States. They're making up crimes. The Democrats are making up crimes in order to destroy the political opposition. And it goes right up to the top of the Democratic Party. We all know that. And so when you look at immunity for a president, the Supreme Court will be looking at this going, my God, because the moment we're living in right now will go down in American history. And it might be, you might look at this 50 years from now and say, okay, that was the beginning of the downfall of the republic. Because you have half the country that doesn't care about the law. And we are a nation of laws. You have half the country. Okay, 40% of the country. Because it's 40-40, really, it's, you know, 40-40 and then (laughs) the other 20%, where are they going to go? But you have one political party, the major political party that is, and a significant portion of the people that vote for that party are okay with not following the law or making up a crime against the political opposition. Forget about the it's Trump. Trump is just the first one they're using it on, hopefully to be successful. And if they are, it will drive other Democratic prosecutors to do that. Now, one of the things that comes up is, well, Republicans should do the same thing. Well, as a conservative, I would say, no, you don't do that. Because if you're a true conservative, you wish to follow the Constitution. The left doesn't care about the Constitution. A significant portion of Democrats don't care about the prosecution. They don't care about the law. They don't care about the Constitution. (laughs) One of the obvious pieces of evidence for that is they wish to change the First Amendment. They wish to get rid of the Second Amendment. They don't want the Senate. They don't want the Electoral College. They don't believe in the separation of powers. We could go on and on and on and on and on with this. But what Kevin O'Leary said is the Supreme Court may have to come up and say, Sorry, because of what's happening right now. The president has immunity uh, against any crime. He said murder, but I could see any crime except a violent crime. Now, that's not what I believe the Constitution originally intended for it to be. But nobody saw this coming because it hasn't happened in all of American history until now. And as we've said, understand how radical the Democratic Party is. They have mainstreamed racism through identity politics. They've mainstreamed misogyny through the radical transgender movement. And now... They are the political party. And by the way, we could go back to before identity politics, uh, Jim Crow laws, slavery, all that. But now they are the party that is okay with prosecuting the political opposition with made-up crimes. This is a huge problem For the United States of America, it's absolutely mind-blowing that so many Democrats 
are not speaking up about this. That the Constitution means nothing to them. The law means nothing to them. Judges and prosecutors making up crimes. This judge here lying to the jury about what the law is. Absolutely reprehensible. Absolutely completely against what the United States of America has stood for. And most Democrats are in favor of it. As we have stated before. We cannot emphasize enough how radical the Democratic Party of the United States has become. I know Democratic Party is the official name. Many people say just call them Democrat. (laughs) Just change. Well, we have said before, if you want to get rid of uh, any of the uh, labels that are associated with slavery or racism, then the Democratic Party is going to have to change. The Democratic Party is going to have to go away. So far, no Democrat has agreed with us. Oh, the Confederate statues had to go away, but not the Democratic Party name or the Democratic Party, which still today practices racism through identity politics. You know it. We all know it. Every Democrat listening knows it. And every Democrat right now knows that what is happening is damaging the presidency and is damaging the president of the, the, the excuse me the, the the United States of America and they don't give a damn tell me where i'm wrong 86690 red eye this report is brought to you by Shell Rotella with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance when it comes to truck maintenance sometimes it's the little things that can cause the most trouble like cabin air filters. When properly serviced, cabin air filters provide a barrier between pollutants and harmful particles outside and your HVAC system. If you don't pay attention to them, however, this small part can turn into big trouble in no time. Breathe easy when you know how often to get your filters replaced. Long-haul drivers should replace their cabin air filters every 50,000 miles or according to the manufacturer's recommendations. If you operate in dusty environments, consider servicing your cabin air filters more often. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley. He has a morning off. I'm Gary McNamara. I don't. I'm here <laughs> uh, along with uh, with you. You know, we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years. You know, uh, James Comey, former director of the FBI, was out and about uh, again peddling uh, uh, his uh, lies and his you know revisionist history. He was the top of the rot, as we have seen uh, in uh, in in the FBI in in law enforcement. Lois Lerner, remember that with the whole IRS and the rot inside of the IRS. Clapper and Brennan, uh, when it comes to our intelligence agencies uh, here and uh, and the CIA. And now you have rogue prosecutors and rogue judges. Uh, there is a huge problem in the United States of America right now. A huge uh, a, a problem. The bureaucracy is full of rot. Leftist prosecutors, leftist judges don't give a damn about the Constitution of the United States. They don't care about law. Think about this. They don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about the law. You've seen the misogyny that they promote in the radical transgender movement. We've seen the racism that they promote with identity politics and the race baiting It has to stop. We got a bunch more coming up here next. to Red Eye Radio. 
from the Uniden America Studios. And he's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning off. I am here. I uh, want to play uh, more audio here. This uh, comes from the uh, interview yesterday, uh, part of the uh, uh, interview with uh, with Trey Gowdy, who was outside the courtroom. And you get to the instruction, which is solely the province of the judge. I mean, I have to disagree with people who say the, the jury can pick among a menu or a buffet of three crimes. There can be any crime. The, the jury doesn't even have to specify. It could be a daggum crime in North Dakota. If it was done in furtherance of another crime, the jury does not have to specify what that crime is. I mean, that is a gift to the prosecution. I mean, it's really incredible when you think about this. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in my life. Probably, well, it, for a, a presidential candidate, for a former president, never. Nothing like this has ever happened. I've never seen anything like this happen in any court ever. And it's just it's just so absolutely uh, reprehensible. Let's go to uh, Ted Cruz. Uh, hang on here. I had it and then it uh, disappeared. Here it is. Um, Ted Cruz talking about it yesterday. Listen, Sean, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is the exchange you were just having with Jonathan Turley is exactly right. We now know to a virtual certainty that no conviction will be upheld on appeal, that the judge today committed, I think, clear reversible error. These jury instructions were nonsense. Now, here's the bad news. The bad news is this has been a kangaroo court from the beginning. This is a wildly partisan prosecutor who hates Donald Trump, who came with a political objective of going after Donald Trump. And we now know from these jury instructions that this judge is every bit the partisan that the prosecutor is. And he knows this is reversible error. As you noted, Ramos versus Louisiana clearly held in 2020 that every element of the crime must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, must be unanimous uh, by the jury. And yet this judge says it doesn't matter, not in New York. The Constitution does not apply in New York, which means if we get a con- conviction, it will be reversed on appeal. But the judge doesn't care. The prosecutor doesn't care. Nobody cares because this is not about law. This is not about criminal justice. This is about politics. This is all about the press conference, the national address that Joe Biden has scheduled to give from the White House, where he gloats, we've now convicted Donald Trump. This is all about November. We are watching election interference. This is the most blatant case of election interference that we've ever seen in our country's history. And he's true because this has never happened before. But uh, it, it's important to understand. And, and, and again, the only way you're going to solve this is to punish the people that do that. And uh, and and when you know, when you look at what has happened here, you either punish the people that do it or you give the president immunity. Any former president gets immunity for anything except a major violent crime. Otherwise, as you see, liberals will attempt to take advantage, break the law, because they're breaking the law. What they're doing here is breaking the law. The judge is lying about the law in his instructions to the jury. That is not the law. As was pointed out yesterday, I'll see if I can find the article on it. It's not even New York State law. Because you can make the case, well, New York state law, no, New York state law doesn't do what the judge is actually doing. And it is just so absolutely reprehensible. And I think that's what really got it going was when, because people were speculating what the judge might do, uh, that that was, you look at it and you go, well, okay, that's absurd. A judge couldn't do that. Now, because we've seen this judge in action, we didn't say that. But a lot of people said, well, no, you just can't do it. Well, he did it. He absolutely did it. That you don't have to, number one, define what the crime is. And you don't have to be unanimous on what the crime is. We can give you three generic possibilities. And if four of the jurors agree on one generic law violation... Doesn't even matter whether Trump did it or not. 
it's the jury, or excuse me, it's the prosecutor and the judge by allowing the prosecutor to throw in lies. There is no campaign violation. And nobody thought that they would ever walk in and say, okay, there's a campaign violation here, but we cannot find the campaign violation. You, the jury, is going to have to determine whether there was a campaign violation or not. We won't even tell you what the elements of the crime are. That is so unbelievable. You just, you're shocked. I I mean, you're just absolutely blown away uh, by it. Reading here, the editors from National Review uh, acquit Trump in the hush money case. Of course. (laughs) But uh, Manhattan uh, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg should never have indicted the so-called hush money case against former President Donald Trump. And now Judge uh, Merchan should throw the case out or the jury should acquit Trump. This is before everything started yesterday for the simple reason that Bragg has has failed to prove the charges. In 2022, the DA rejected the push for an indictment by some of his subordinates. Bragg (laughs) Bragg said, you can't do this. This is ridiculous. Then ended up doing it. He received the prosecution. He revived, excuse me. He revived the prosecution in 2023 only... After another Democrat, Attorney General Letitia James, was lauded by New York progressives for bringing a sprawling victimless civil fraud case, Bragg had declined to charge criminally. And when it was clear that Trump would run for president in 2024, Bragg's indictment failed to perform its basic constitutional function of putting the defendant on notice of what the crime is. The false business records charge against Trump requires proof that he aimed to conceal another crime. The prosecution waited till the closing argument after the defense had rested its case and could not respond to disclose definitively that the other crime was violating federal campaign finance law. Bragg's overarching theory is that Trump defrauded the voters of information about the affair he is alleged to have in in 2006 with porn star Stormy Daniels, but concealing bad things during an election is not a crime. And none of the business records at issue were created until after the election. Bragg, notorious uh, for pleading felonies down to misdemeanors, has, in the case of Trump, taken a case of accounting that might not even be a misdemeanor and inflated it into 34 felony counts of business records falsification for a combined statutory penalty of up to 136 years imprisonment. The prosecution's case is woefully inefficient. It depends on sleight of hand about what the crime is. Inadmissible evidence, and not least, Judge Mershon whose hostility to the defense illustrated his partisan bias. It is shocking that until the prosecution's closing argument, that there was still uncertainty about the charges in the criminal trial. So the prosecution, in the closing argument, when the defense couldn't cross-examine or but anything, they throw in this generic campaign, you know, election violation when there is none. But the judge allowed the prosecution and agreed with the prosecution 
that there was a campaign violation without ever describing to the jury what it was. And then where in the law it states what he did was against the law. Mershon has nevertheless endorsed Bragg's claim that the New York penal statute's criminalization of business records falsification with intent to conceal another crime greenlight state prosecution under federal law. Well, that's a complete lie. It doesn't do that. They can't judge federal law. I mean, it is so, I mean, it's just so mind boggling what is going on here. To establish Trump's guilt on the dubious charges, Bragg must prove that the business records in question were intentionally falsified, and this was done with the intent to defraud, and that this fraudulent intent included concealment of willful noncompliance with federal election campaign law. It's not even clear that Bragg can prove the records are false, but the evidence of fraud is scant, and there is no evidence that anyone was even thinking about federal election campaign law at the relevant time because the documents were filled out after the election was over. Just amazing. And I, you know, we've gone through this over and over again, and it's like, of course, a prosecution, Bragg doesn't care, but the judge doesn't care. You know, there's been bad prosecutors out there before. But this is really the worst performance I've ever seen of a sitting judge. You know, the discipline in New York, I don't know. But as far this judge, in my humble opinion after this, should be removed from office, impeached, whatever, however you do it in New York. Because the rot that exists there, the stinking filthy rot that exists, that Democrats agree with. Because the only thing you're really hearing from Democrats right now is, well, they realize it's working against them. Well, we need to be talking about inflation and not uh, Trump. And we need to be talking about inflation and what's going on at the border and and uh, all this stuff and instead of uh, instead of Trump. But they're not looking at this and saying this is a horrendous historic moment in American history. Where you have a major political party that doesn't give a damn about due process rights, doesn't give a damn about the Constitution, and in the case of this judge, will lie to the jury about what the law states. And that's what this judge is doing. He's lying to the jury. 866-90-RED-EYE. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning uh, off, so it's uh, you and me. More on the Trump trial coming up. Uh, Scotty Scheffler uh, charges dropped uh, against him uh, yesterday. Uh, we will get to that. The whole Samuel Alito, or Samuel Alito, the uh, Supreme Court justice, responded to, uh, to, uh, to, to Democrats. We touched this. Somebody asked me, they said, did you guys talk about that much? But no, we simply said... Uh, well, we said, no, there's nothing there. You simply follow the, you know, the Ruth Gator, uh, Bader Ginsburg, excuse me, Gator, <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, precedent, which is she talked about politics whenever she wanted to. So it doesn't. <laughs> and no Democrat complained there. So we really didn't get into the minutia of that at all. But uh, we will talk about the, the letter that he wrote back to the Democrat uh, leadership 
Oh, and man, Seinfeld. See, Seinfeld was on Barry Weiss's podcast. D- is he is he coming out a- as political? That's that that's what I meant by that. Because here's the headline <laughs> from TMZ: Jerry Seinfeld, bring back dominant masculinity. Now I read that headline and burst out laughing. <laughs> He admitted he is not the epitome of dominant masculinity, by the way. (laughs) We'll get to that and more. Your calls to 866-90-RED-EYE. Top of the hour news is brought to you by House Products. Visit houseproducts.com. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley. He has the morning off. I'm Gary McNamara. I am here. Thank you for being here. You know, I'd mentioned uh, earlier that uh, I think it was on Fox Business, uh, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, and uh, saying that, you know, the Supreme Court might be looking at this, and you're like, they, you're going to have to change immunity, the immunity uh, parameters for an ex-president now because of this. Uh and I agree with him. I don't know if it's going to happen with this Supreme Court. But obviously, uh, he said, as he said, um, somehow we're going to have to get to the point of an ex-president can't be charged with anything but maybe a violent crime, murder, or any type of violent crime, or sexual assault, or whatever. Uh, but he was saying murder. Murder. Because as we know, there are people that will come forward with no evidence that they were raped. Gorsuch, for example, no evidence. Nobody can verify that it ever happened. The witnesses that that did speak out, well, he wasn't even there. The story, as we all know, with Gorsuch was completely bogus. Now, that didn't get to criminal court. But why couldn't it? And and so uh, Democrats are not going to stop doing this. By the way, I had somebody comment, I disagree with you. Uh, Republicans uh, need to do the exact same thing that Democrats are doing. Well, you might want to do that. Conservatives aren't going to do that. That was my point. Conservative judges are not going to do what Judge Mershon is doing. Constructionist judges that believe in the Constitution won't. Mershon doesn't believe in the Constitution. That's my point. And if both sides say to hell with the law, that's the beginning of the Republic crumbling. But uh, he was, uh, uh, O'Leary was on the five and had this to say about uh, this trial on this day. Obviously, all of these Trump brands all around the world on real estate are royalty-based businesses. I particularly love that because you don't need a lot of capital, but you get a lot of cash flow. So I've admired what he's done from the business perspective. I bet you, if it's true that this election is going to be decided by independent voters, if I polled 10,000 independent voters right now, let's say I could just wave a magic wand and do that on a panel. I bet you, after all of these six weeks, wherever it's been... Even if you watch the synopsis every night on the news somewhere, whatever outlet you watch, you are still 99% totally confused on what the hell is going on. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, it, it's it, even if you spent full all day listening to this, which some people did, you're still confused. And so I just wonder in, in that group of jurors if 
a few of them are just looking at each other saying, I don't know. This is a mess. I, I don't even understand what the judge is telling me to do. That's why I'm asking you to read it over to me again, because they can't take it printed in and read it. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I just look at it and say to myself, wow, this is bad for the American brand. That's what I keep going at. It really is. It's and like I said in the earlier interview is when he said, you're going to have to have immunity for a president from from all crimes except he said murder. Didn't even say violent crimes, but murder, because murder, you got to prove and there's got to be a body. And I know what you're saying. Uh, Democrats will accuse you of that. And since evidence doesn't matter and nothing matters, they'll try that, too. And I understand what O'Leary is saying. For me, it's not it's not confusion because it's obvious what's going on. You have a rogue judge, you have a rogue prosecutor. These are people that don't give a damn about the law and the Constitution. Now, that may be some of the confusion where people are like going, well, he claims he's stating the law. He's lying. The judge is lying to the jury. Mershon is lying to the jury. And by the way, we've been saying this for weeks. He allowed lying to the jury and continues to allow lying to the jury and himself with what he put in the jury instructions as to what the law is, is a lie. The law isn't that, not even in New York State. He's lying to the jury. Uh, Let's head to you because I was just going to address this, and this addresses something that I was going to address. So we go to uh, Alec uh, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Alec, welcome. You're on Rod Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Uh, you Let me run a little bit here of this. I called and said about accountability. How can these people lie? They're corrupt, and everybody can see it, but there's no accountability. How can this judge go up there and say he's going to get Trump? He he publicly said that. The prosecutor said that. The judge didn't. They just let this go on. Alec, the prosecutor said that. The judge did not. Okay, well, you could tell. Well, you could tell where the judge's head is. Oh no, you're, I agree with you I on mean, that. Where, I, his, yeah. where his thoughts are. Yes, but uh, but this thing with Trump, uh, you know, I, I like the orange man. Uh, uh, I when I vote, I vote for the best person for the job, and it took Biden and Obama eight years to do the destruction they did to our country. And Trump cleaned it up better in four. Getting uh, back to the case here, because I want to I want to stick to this particular case and, and what you said about accountability, uh, because that's a, a big concern. Sometimes the accountability doesn't come in the way that you think. For example, Hillary Clinton clearly broke the law. Comey wouldn't prosecute her. Uh, we knew exactly what the law was. You could take the law, the Espionage Act, and apply it to what she did. She took a server and put it in her own home uh, where the FBI believed that uh, uh, foreign enemies of the United States got in to her computer. She went outside the Freedom of Information Act. She did that in order to not be accountable. That's against the law. She did that. And the Espionage Act, bringing and talking and doing top secret things on a non-secure computer. We all know what she did. Comey said she broke the law, simply said no reasonable prosecutor would pros, you know, would uh, would would prosecute in that case. So people said she was never held accountable. Well, she didn't win the election. Sometimes accountability comes in different ways. Uh, for Mershon, I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't I don't know. For Bragg, Bragg is elected. This is what the people of New York want. The people of New York voted for this. Now, I'm not talking to, and I know I'm talking to (laughs) some of you listening right now, (laughs) especially outside the big cities would be saying, no, we did. No, but the majority of voters wanted this. This is what the majority of New York voters want. Where does the accountability come in? Well, we know. We had talked about this. Let's go back first to Attorney General James and the civil suit against Donald Trump. 
three hundred. I don't even know what it is now. I forgot what what it has been brought down to. Uh, in all likelihood, uh, on appeal, Trump's going to win that case. On appeal, going to win. Uh, on appeal, if he's found guilty here, will win. Uh, uh, this case uh, on appeal. Uh, you may have whatever court decides it, reprimand the judge. Uh, I don't know what happens at that point in New York law. I believe this judge has no business being on the bench at all. Uh, but understand, this is what New York wants. Now, what comes with this? In fact, I just played Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary was saying, who the hell wants to do business in New York? After the, uh, you know, the uh, Attorney General James civil suit against Trump, where fraud is now fraud can be, as we have stated, fraud in New York can now be any dealership. If the prosecutor wishes to prosecute it, any car dealership that puts out an MSRP. That would be considered fraud because nobody pays that. You're saying that's what it's worth. That's not what it's worth. Nobody pays that. Tell me the last person that paid MSRP for a vehicle. That's fraud. Under where they have gone in New York State now, that's fraud. Businesses don't want to do business. And now, if Trump is found guilty here, falsifying records, when he didn't falsify any records, and you see where New York State will go if you are not of the right political bent, remember If they're going to use this against Trump, they're going to use it against Republicans in New York State. They won't, you know, they they will not, they will not stop. What's the accountability? I was just talking to here in the last week. Not getting into details, but a person I know who works for a bank. Not from New York. New York is, they are, and this was even before uh, the civil suit. They will do no business in New York because of how litigious it is. They will do no business in New York. And now you've got businesses saying, my God, we if... If our CEO speaks out or we do anything that is uh, not the narrative of the Democratic Party, they'll destroy us. We're going, (laughs) we're heading to Texas. We're heading to Florida. Already we were talking about the prediction that in 30 years, New York will no longer be the financial capital of the world because nobody will wish to be there that in all likelihood it will be Miami. We had that discussion about a month ago. um, You know, uh, when a couple of articles came out on it and said, New York is not going to be the financial capital because Democrats don't believe in financial capital to begin with. They don't believe in capitalism. And so what's going to happen to the state? The accountability will affect and the people that will suffer of the consequences of what they voted for, putting Bragg in office and allowing New York to become a rogue prosecutor and a rogue judge state, it will eventually be, the accountability will be on the state of New York. Who, who, tell me what business, and this, Kevin O'Leary, I'm so glad I I played it. I didn't know I was going in this direction, but Kevin O'Leary was the one who said it. I'm out. I'm not doing any business in New York. And as businesses pull out, that means taxes have to be raised because of the welfare state that New York has become, which means more on the middle class, more on the poor. Then the rich will say, because they'll attempt, we've got to tax the daylights out of the rich. The rich will say, bye, we're going to Texas, we're going to Florida or any other state out there. I'm just using Florida and Texas as an example. We don't want everybody here. 
even though I think we're big enough to hold everybody. Just remember, we have bad weather here. (laughs) It's that Gulf air coming up and hitting the Arctic front, just so people understand. Uh, So that's where the accountability, definitely the accountability will be there in the the private sector. Because both of these cases involve businesses. And what fraud is, what business, what fraud is and what business fraud is. And now fraud can be whatever the prosecutor says it is. And with rogue judges lying to juries, you think somebody's going to look at this? I want to put my major financial institution in New York. Hey, I'm a capitalist, so I have a lot of conservative ideas. Maybe New York is not the place for me to be. 866-90-RED-EYE. Brought to you by FPPF, Fuel Power Max. It's a common road rumor that it's impossible for one truck owner operators and even carriers with just two or three trucks to get freight direct from the source, the shipper. Yet, hard-won experience from untold numbers of owner operators with authority disproves the notion. Search your home base area and later, frequent freight destinations to find all the manufacturers, distributors, and other shippers in the area. Once you get that list, ask yourself if those companies know who you are and what you do. If not, you're leaving opportunities on the table. Strive to own your backyard, to build a solid foundation for the business. For many a small fleet, it's the loads outbound from home that are the bread and butter. But you can take that same approach to the destination area, identifying shippers there and getting on the phone to make sure they know who you are and what you do. Owner Operator Business 101 is provided by Overdrive's Partners in Business program. Go to overdriveonline.com to the Partners in Business section of the website for more detail on this and many other topics. Brought to you by Shell Rotella. With advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's her curly, and he has the morning off. I'm Gary McNamara. I don't. I'm here with you. And I do want to play this other audio cut because he was on uh, uh, Kevin O'Leary, also on Fox Business earlier. And I had mentioned he had said this, talking about the Supreme Court looking at the immunity right now, the immunity cases before the uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, where does the president have immunity? And he's like, wow. Uh, because nobody has nobody ever saw this coming because this hasn't happened in the history of the country where the Democrats decided let's make up a crime and go after a president and then lie to the jury because that's what they've done. Let us just take an ex-president and just say his constitutional rights don't matter at all. We won't even tell him what the crime is until the end. In our closing arguments and the prosecution gets to end their closing arguments, they point out the crime in the closing arguments, which is the generic campaign finance uh, 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 law, which doesn't apply here. And you can't make the case. You can't you don't have the pieces of evidence that match what they're telling the jury is a crime. And he makes the point that. Uh, immunity could change. Because right now, a president should have immunity now. Because we know that Democrats will make up crimes in order to hopefully ensure a win for them in November by making sure the lead candidate for president of the United States right now, according to all of the polls, is Donald Trump can't campaign Maybe we can get him in jail. Maybe then we can say he's a convicted felon. This is the goal. Here we go. Here's the audio. Fundraising with some of the largest pension plans and institutions in London, England, and Geneva, Switzerland. And in previous weeks, when this thing started in the Middle East, this is really bad for our American brand. Forget about Trump for a second. We took someone out of the executive office. We had a porn star talking about sex with condoms in court to our to an executive of 
the, an ex-president of the United States, that's what happens in Venezuela. That's what happens in... It, it, and so I walked in these meetings, and they want to talk about porn star wars. I thought to myself, what are we doing to our brand? What, why are we doing this to ourselves? I would argue we should raise the bar on former executives of the White House, regardless of what party they were in, and say, unless it's murder, we're not bringing you into court. You're, we're tainting our brand, a 200-year brand. But it's Biden that's doing it. Well, By the way, I, I'm so, so glad you said that. Uh, we're not doing it. The Democrats are doing it. Pulling better than Biden. Eric and Gary on Red Eye Radio. And he is Eric Hurley. He has the morning off. I'm Gary McNamara. I'm here. Welcome and thank you for being here this morning. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, I'm not surprised by all of this. It's just letting people know what the, the, the truth is in this. And, uh, not surprised that the Democrats, the Democrats will attempt to do anything. As we have stated before, when the majority of Democrats are behind the misogyny of the radical transgender movement, the women hatred that exists there, the bullying of women, the threatening of women, and 99% of Democrats in Congress are for men competing against women, then anything goes. That's We've said this for such a long time. Anything goes. When you have a Democratic Party that has practiced identity politics for the the modern identity politics movement, which was started against conservative blacks in the late 80s, early 90s, I view it starting uh, with uh, Justice Thomas and then expanding when conservative talk radio in the late 80s, early 90s, started to grow, and conservative black talk show hosts were out there. That's when the demonization started, that all blacks must think alike. And if you don't, if you have a mind of your own, then you are simply being manipulated by whitey. This is what they believe. So when you have a party that was the party of slavery, the party of Jim Crow, and now the party of identity politics the party of misogyny, the anti-science party, stating that a man can be a woman if a man says so, when you have a Democratic Party that is clearly stated they are against the First Amendment in its current form, they don't believe in freedom of religion, they don't believe in freedom of speech, they don't believe in the Second Amendment, they don't believe in the separation of powers, and we know that, Uh, with the Supreme Court nominees and other nominees that they wish to put on the bench. If you ever get a chance, you should watch some of the... uh, I watch it all the time on uh, on YouTube. Uh, When uh, the, the, uh, the, the Senate talks to these judicial nominees that Biden is putting in, they're so incredibly radical, you're blown away. You're like, what the hell? You're you're not what constitution are you going to defend? Because obviously you don't believe in the one that exists now. Eric and I have been warning about this for the longest time. And when we said things like the identity politics that exist there, the radical transgender movement that exists and has majority approval of Democrats in Congress. When you have this, when you have Obviously, the Democrats being mainstream. I mean, they're not hiding it. How anti they are, basic tenets of the Constitution of the United States. Then we shouldn't be surprised when this happens. When you have a rogue prosecutor, doesn't give a damn about the law. When you have uh, a, a judge who will lie to a jury... Mershon knows this is bogus. 
He knows what he's doing. This is an accidental reversible error. This is all calculated. You shouldn't be surprised when that happens. I did see the story yesterday just to give you more evidence. In Boston, the mayor came out against prosecuting people for theft. What the hell? How many times have you heard us say this on the air? How many times have we said, you've got to understand how radical the Democrats are? I used to, friends of mine, you know, uh, uh, even, you know, independent Bob. Well, I mean, there's good things in both parties. Tell me a good thing with Democrats right now. Tell me a good thing. I've often got that from independents. Well, I weigh both sides. Yeah, weigh both sides. What are you weighing with the Democrats right now? Tell me what you're weighing. What is there to weigh with them where you sit there and go, well, both parties have good. Tell me, tell me one from a Democrat right now. Uh, well, I'll probably get an abortion call, right? That would be the only one. That would be the only one. <laughs> I mean, everything. Uh, think about this. Uh, and by the way, I haven't even added the new one for Democrats, which is pro-terrorism. We haven't even added that one. Here it is. Uh, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu advocated a soft on crime agenda by pushing to abolish the gang registry and arguing that criminal behavior such as theft should not be prosecuted. Prior to being elected mayor, Wu filled out the 2021 Boston mayoral candidate questionnaire from Progressive Massachusetts, a, uh, a 501c nonprofit organization that tracks and ranks how progressive uh, elected officials are. According to the website, the group intends to transform Massachusetts into a bold laboratory for progressive state initiatives. In the document, Wu outlined her most progressive commitments, including her support for non-citizens voting in Boston's local elections. The mayor was asked, do you support shuttering the Boston police gang database? She answered, yes. Then Wu was asked uh, whether she supported a do not prosecute list enacted by the former district attorney, uh, Rachel Rollins. Rollins enacted a policy memo identifying more than a dozen charges she said should be she would decline to par- prosecute. Those crimes included shoplifting, larceny, disorderly conduct, receiving stolen property, driving with a suspended license, breaking and entering with property damage, wanton and malicious destruction of property, threats, minor in possession of alcohol, marijuana possession, possession with intent to distribute, and non-marijuana drug possession. The day it was later brought into the Biden administration, before resigning after an ethics probe found Rollins committed egregious ethical violations and an abuse of of power. Do you support, the mayor was asked in Boston, the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office do not prosecute list an expanded approach to dealing with such low-level offenses? Yes or no? Yes, Wu responded. Wu also responded to advocate for reallocating some of the police budgets towards other city priorities as mayor. The mayor said she believes law enforcement should be demilitarized. Understand the people of Boston voted her into office. The people of Boston want criminals running free. Liberals want people running free. Democrats want criminals running free. Did you see? I got to find it. The, the state representative of, in California that uh, California was is, is attempting to uh, that they changed a bill a couple of months ago uh, that uh, I, that uh, it wasn't a crime uh, uh, for if you were sixteen or seventeen year old, you know that you could be a prostitute. You know, that you could, you know, that that the, these the prostitution laws minor, wouldn't affect you. They're reversing it now. The Senate voted unanimously because of the outcry. And you had one Senate uh, Democrat. She's resigning. She just goes, you people are basically you people are nuts. 
you or she's she's leaving office. You people are nuts. I'm not with you anymore. If you don't even care about young girls anymore, what the hell do you care about? Again, understand that what is happening here in New York is just the mainstream politics of the Democratic Party in the United States today. It's what they believe. And what they believe in is complete and total anarchy. They don't believe in the law. They don't believe in the autonomy of an individual. You judge somebody by their individuality. They're about racism. They're about bigotry. They're about misogyny from the radical transgender movement. They're against destroying the Constitution of the United States. By the way, in their own words, we're not making any of this up. It's not that, well, they've said nothing. You guys are just making it up. No, they've been clear. They want the First Amendment gone. First Amendment goes too far. There's too much free speech. Second Amendment, got to go. Separation of powers, nope. Sorry, the public takes too long to come to a conclusion, so we need to put judges in that will make law, not interpret the law. It takes too long. Judges need to set, it's a living, breathing document, the Constitution. And where it lives and breathes, judges are supposed to figure out where it lives and breathes instead of the people of the United States setting what the Constitution is. They don't believe in the Electoral College. They don't believe in the Senate. They don't believe in punishing criminals. Remember what Bragg did when he came into office. Because people think when I when I tell this to, you know, uh, you know, acquaintances that are liberal. Well, I haven't heard any of this. A lot of by the way, a lot of Democrats have just shut off the media completely. And wish to live in their own little world that, oh, okay, everything's go Okay, the Democrats, I don't know this. I don't. They figure I think that's their best defense. I haven't heard that. And if I haven't heard it, then it doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. But Bragg <laughs> actually said he proposed that if somebody robs, for all the anti-gun people out there on the left, wanting to take away your constitutional right to own a gun. Bragg is out there when he first came into office saying, well, if you use a gun in the commission of a crime, but you don't pull the trigger, we're not going to charge you with a felony. I'm just, until there was such public outcry, but remember, Bragg was elected. Attorney General James elected the people of new york want an anarchist state talking about the people that win the elections that vote for the democrats wish i know there are many good conservatives in new york i'm from new york i know but the rest want this Oh, by the way, everybody's screaming. There's just so much, <laughs> since we're focusing on New York, what is it, National Grid there wants to raise electricity prices, skyrocket through the roof, you know, next to start next year, like 20%, like immediate, boom, to to go up. And it's like, obviously, it's because of energy. And the other story that New York actually has a ton of natural gas that they found a ton of natural, won't go for it. <laughs> New Yorkers elect politicians to hurt them. I'm thinking of the song, baby, don't hurt me no more. It's like they, they, that's, oh, that's why they love it in the discos. In New York, they still exist today. I can't remember the name of the band that does it. All I can see is Will Ferrell, you know, shaking his head in the movie back and forth when they were in the car. Baby, don't hurt me no more. But it's what they want. They want to be hurt. What is it? Do they elect politicians to make their life a living hell so they can claim to be victims? We elect politicians to make our life a living hell, to destroy our state, and then we can claim we're victims and elect the same people again who will say, you're victims, who will then make our life even worse, and then we can claim that we're even bigger victims.
Is this what this is? The, is that the circle of victimhood from liberals and Democrats? But again, none of this is a surprise at all. None of this. None of this is a surprise. It was always going to happen. Every time we would bring it up, oh, you guys are talking about the slippery slope. Well, we've slipped down the slope, haven't we? We're at the bottom now. No surprise. But understand, this is what the Democratic Party is about. It's calculated. It's what they want. You got the government you want in New York State. And it's a living hell. 866-90-RED-EYE. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has some morning off coming up following the top of the hour. If Trump is found guilty, then what next? Uh, Dershowitz, uh, Alan Dershowitz, saying he should immediately appeal to the uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, on this. And uh, what do you appeal on? We'll get to that and more coming up, plus more of uh, your uh, calls and uh, comments if you'd uh, like to get in. The uh, busted, busted Gaza Pier... Uh, More of that uh, coming up, and uh, what a crazy day, huh? It's going to be another one today, by the way. This is Red Eye Radio. On Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning off. Thank you for being here. Good morning. You know, one of the things that's so disturbing, and I mentioned this before, we've seen we've seen rogue prosecutors before. We've seen prosecutors go way too far. Uh, I've seen it many times uh, on um, uh, on uh, on local uh, issues, uh, where you have you know prosecutors that will go too far in this case though what you have is the stink and rot of of a judge of a rogue judge judge merchant um and he knows what he's doing remember the judge's job is number one to you know run a courtroom the way it's supposed to be run but number two the judge is there to protect the rights of the defendant. And it's been the complete opposite. The judge has done everything possible to ensure that the defendant in this case does not have his due process rights. Everything from the gag order to not even allowing the defense to know what the specific crime is against the defendant. It's so incredibly outrageous. That's why you've seen federal prosecutors themselves, because many of these people aren't judges or federal prosecutors. You know, you look at Trey Gowdy, you look at Andrew McCarthy, they're prosecutors. Look at this from that side going, my God, what in the hell's going on here? And that's why Trump's numbers have gone up. Now, the last thing is they wish to convict him, and then the president will give a speech. He's supposed to give a speech after uh, afterwards. And then the campaign will just consistently say, 
Watch the ads come out. The ads will be all over the place. Convicted felon Donald Trump. And the whole thing is about one thing, election interference. But that's the thing. The judge is as bad as any crooked cop. He's a crooked judge. And the fact is, I can say that and not one Democrat can call me and say, you're wrong. How dare you call a judge crooked? Because except for MSNBC, where uh, former Mueller, uh, the uh, Mueller report, uh, chief prosecutor Andrew uh, Weissman apparently was on MSNBC uh, uh, yesterday in his preamble to Pride Month, talked about the man crush that he has on Judge Mershon. Uh, And by the way, uh, Weissman knew that when the uh, Mueller investigation started that the dossier was bogus. He knew it at the time. They knew, everybody knew it by the time it started. Just like Comey did when Comey did his speeches. Comey knew that it was bogus and was lying to the American public. These people are the rotten stink in the justice system today. They don't care. And the reason I can say he's crooked and he should be off the bench is because you can't argue with what he's done. You can't. It's impossible. You can't have one little iota of legal training and say, oh, yep, this judge has been fair across the board. The defendant didn't even know until the final arguments from the prosecution what they claim the crime was. They have never presented the evidence of a crime according to even New York state law. What they've said is, here's all these things that Trump did that were legal, and they simply said they were illegal. So they lied to the jurors. The prosecution lied to the jurors. The judge, Judge Mershon, lied to the jurors. That has to be said over and over and over again. And I know Republicans are getting stronger on this, but they need to talk about the fact that the judge has lied in his instructions to the jurors and the judge has allowed lies to continue from the prosecution against the defendant. My God, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be a citizen of New York right now and go before a judge like, you know, Mershon ever. I don't know. I've always, you know, you you look at it and you see some, you know, people that go to law school and they become judges and then they just say, screw the law. How do you get to that point of being so rotten to the core as Judge Mershon is? And like I say, I dare anybody to make a point that he's not, because you can't. He is a rogue judge that doesn't give a damn about the Constitution, about a defendant's rights, or of the law. He doesn't give a damn about the law. How do you get to that stinking rot in your mind? Because that's where he is. Uh, let's go to here. Uh, uh, you had former federal prosecutor a- uh, Andrew uh, Cherkasky, uh yesterday on Fox News and uh, talked about what's going on here and what happened yesterday. Here we go. What did you make of this that we got to today before we heard an enumeration of what that potential underlying charge is that turns this whole thing in to a series of felonies that escapes the statute of uh, limitations? 
Well, I don't think it's any surprise. We've seen this train coming for a long time. The defense has been begging for clarity about what this escalating offense really looks like. And now we see that the judge all along was going to let the prosecutors essentially have this three different prong approach to that escalating offense. So it, it's offensive as a criminal defense attorney. I think that the idea of representing a client necessitates that you have adequate notice of exactly what you're defending your client against. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a major issue in this case, one that would be certain to go up on appeal if there's any sort of conviction. But this is what I think they all saw coming when the judge was so uh, hesitant and reluctant to require the prosecution to provide that additional clarity. So let's talk about that. If there is a conviction, we have no idea if that's where this case is going to lean. But if so, we're going to have an appeal. Um, does is this judgment state on appeal? Is that up to the appellate judge at the next level? I'm not really sure here in New York, but if there's a conviction, uh, it's going to take a while before you would get through the appeals process months, maybe years here in New York. It would take at least many months to get through an appellate process. Uh, typically on a first time offense, uh, especially where there's not a violent crime, it takes three or four months to do kind of a pre-sentencing assessment period. Uh, there is mm -hmm. the opportunity to appeal to the appellate court to stay the sentencing until after the appeal is complete. So uh, I don't see there being a sentencing ahead of the November election under most uh, the most likely circumstances here, although the appellate court could punt on that request require sentencing to be done uh, and that the sentencing be done right ahead of the November election, essentially. Okay, so there's been talk of the lack of knowledge of that underlying crime being uh, something you mentioned there could be appealable, potentially a reversible error. Um, under our system, obviously, a defendant has to know what they're trying to defend themselves against. Are there other things you've seen in the case, whether jury instructions or rulings, other decisions the judge has made uh, that you would think would be top of mind for the Trump team if there is a conviction and they launch an appeal? I, th I think you go from the beginning all the way to the end. So at the beginning, you have the judge who's on the case and the bias that he, of course, uh, has had throughout this case. And, and obviously, the defense has made a big deal of that. You talk about Stormy Daniels and the way that Stormy Daniels was brought into the case. But it's not just Stormy Daniels with regard to this uh, kind of idea of other wrongs, crimes, or acts. The idea of showing other bad conduct of Donald Trump in order to prove his criminality here has been pervasive throughout this case. And so that's a real issue. Uh, obviously, the testimony of Stormy Daniels and some of the, uh, the the prosecution's deep dive into the sexuality allegations that occurred between her and Donald Trump after specifically having instructions from the judge not to go into that information. And then, of course, we have legal-based issues. Uh, are these, in fact, crimes that are legitimate in the first place in consideration of the statute of limitations and the charging scheme that the, uh, the government brought here? So uh, there is a cornucopia of of appellate issues here. I know the Trump team wants nothing to do with this case having to move forward to appeals, but if it goes forward, there's certainly many issues that can be brought. Yeah, the entire trial. <laughs> the, the judge biases and everything. I mean, it's just, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. You know, and we've talked about this before, but you get to the point of now everything is done and you absorb everything and you're just like, my God. What in the hell is going on? What the hell happened to justice in the United States whatsoever? And believe me, if it can happen to Trump, anybody in New York State, you better not get in the judicial system because if you're not on the right side of the political aisle, they will screw you over and they'll say to hell the, with your constitutional rights and they will make up crimes. They will create crimes. You know, it's one thing for judges... Supreme Court judges to make law instead of interpret law. It's a whole different other ball game when prosecutors and judges collude together to make up a law and they know they're making it up. That's why they didn't present it to the defense. Here's what we're going to charge them with. That's why it, they waited until the prosecution had the last word because in New York, man, is that ever perverted? The defense goes first, followed by the prosecution, so the prosecution can make allegations and tell the jury what the crime is when all along it was never mentioned in the trial what the crime is. So the defense can never rebut 
what the prosecution is saying. Just a complete cluster blank perversion of the judicial system and a complete lack of the protection of the rights of the defendant in this case. And every Democrat listening, if you paid attention to this case, the Democrats who would disagree haven't been paying attention to the case. They, their opinion would be based on ignorance. If you paid attention to this case and you have any type of legal expertise at all, any type of junior high school idea of how the judicial system goes and how court cases go, you look at this and you say, my God, the stinking rot in, uh, uh, in that court of Judge Merchon and, uh, and Bragg. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you want to get in, we do have a line open, 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning off. You and me and Matt in Maryland about the Trump trial. Matt, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hey, folks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I don't know who's listening you know, at 3.30 in the morning, but to those Democrats out there, uh, it, it's no longer the Democrat Party, and, and, and they need to quit fooling themselves that this is the Democrat Party of the 50s and 60s, et cetera, and uh, th- this is now turned full tilt toward tyranny, toward communism. It, you can literally go to the history books and go take a look. It's time to wake up. You don't have to like Trump, but for the love of God, if you love this country, and as a retired former Marine who has been in combat zones, uh, they are itching to push for civil war. That's exactly what it looks like to me. New Yorkers, in general, are great people who love this country. I went and enlisted after 9-11. It was very personal to me. So please stop the insanity. Get your vote out there. Reel this in and protect our Constitution for the love of God and all that's holy. Moving on from there, Judge Mershon, that ridiculous. He's not a judge. There's, there's nothing. He, he's reminiscent of a Nazi judge. If you go look at the, at the trials uh, that, that, that they put on, or even uh, within communist Soviet Union, it, it looks exactly like that. And that's exactly what a judge does. They dictate from the bench. They're not there to play referee. They're there to simply just get a prosecution and send somebody to death. And in short, that's what they're trying to do here, only it's called a political death. You can withhold your vote. If you can see what is going on and you can readily see that this is absolutely corruption at its best, then you can withhold the vote. You don't have to like the guy, that, the, the opponent. That's fine. Don't. Feel free. Don't vote. When you go, withhold your vote because the alternative is absolute tyranny. If you don't think this runs all the way to the top, you've lost your mind. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I thought you you were done, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, and some really uh, uh, great points. And, and I agree with you. This is the Democratic Party. That's why I laid out everything that they've done over the last couple of years. Uh, it is no coincidence, again, that the 99 percent of Congress voted to of, of the Democrats in Congress voted to have men play against women and not get upset at all about the misogyny, the bullying, the threats against women there's a reason for it there's a reason for critical race theory there's a that comes from identity politics it's the racism of the democratic party that has been mainstreamed in the federal democratic party none of these are coincidence at all when you see what happened with uh the attorney general and the civil fine uh against or the civil case against trump there was no fraud they made up a they made up a new definition of fraud that isn't even in the law where there's where there's you know no victim there's no victim there's no fraud 
I mean, it's just, and then this fraud case, like I said, what business wants to do business now in New York? But the only thing I would disagree, yeah, New Yorkers are great people, a lot of great people. Interesting that just coming up yesterday in YouTube as I was going through trying to get through all the different uh, audio cuts and who was saying what on YouTube yesterday at home, uh, I just left it going in and shuffle and up came some 9-11 footage, some like remastered 9-11 footage from that day. And I thought to myself, what the hell happened to the country since 9-11? You know, you had just mentioned it, our last caller. What the hell happened? What, ha- you know, what happened to this country? And uh, under- because understand that Bragg is only in power. Bragg is only in power because the majority of voters in New York wanted it. So New Yorkers may be great people, but many of those great, quote, great people wanted the judicial system to become corrupt because that's exactly what happened. Then they get it and they're like, Oh, what the hell is going on? We didn't know this was going to happen. Well, you should have been paying attention. So yeah. um, When you look at this situation, you just shake your head because it's, it really is. It's really, it's unbelievable what's happening. I saw another thing where, was it on, uh, was it CBS or one of them, or CNN doing the poll? Well, Americans really don't care. They're really not paying attention. Well, I know a lot of Americans that care about it. The Democrats are quiet about it. They're not saying much about it because they know it's a rogue judge and a rogue prosecutor. And yeah, by not saying anything about it, yeah, they endorse it. But there's a hell of a lot of people angry with what's going on in this country right now. And I'm one of them, and you're one of them. You're listening to Red Eye Radio. From the Uniden America Studios. And he is Eric Carlton. I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome and good morning. Thanks so much uh, for being here this morning. You can download our Red Eye Radio app today and listen when and where you choose. If you can't listen live overnight, the last caller, and thanks so much for your call, uh, said, I don't know who's listening at 3.30 in the morning. Well, that would be Eastern uh, Time, 2.30 Central, 1.30 uh, Rocky Mountain Time. And uh, 1230 Pacific. So uh, people are listening anywhere from 10 at night, depending on where you are in the country, till 6 in the morning. And then afterwards, our show becomes our podcast, which is played throughout the day for as long as people want to listen to it. So we have a very big audience, just so you know. But thank you because you reminded me to promote the podcast. Our show becomes a podcast just a few minutes after the show's done, right? (laughs) Alan's the one who does it. He's he's the one who makes sure the transfer happens. Yeah, yep, it does. It does, yes. Uh, I do want to get here because this is actually something from Jonathan Turley, not last night, but the night before when he was on in Hannity. Because this is after uh, the, um, uh, this was, uh, uh, I think, after the, uh, the final, the closing arguments. Uh, and I was really interested in what he had to say because Sean Hannity was saying this judge is just unbelievable, basically saying it's a, he's a rogue and, and crooked judge. Here's Jonathan Turley on that. Here we go. Well, it's not that I haven't uh, seen anything like this. I haven't even read about anything like this. What I saw in that courtroom uh, was really otherworldly, and, you know, I've I've really attempted to give the judge the benefit of doubt on many occasions, but what I saw today was, frankly, outrageous. At one point, uh, the prosecutor actually said that Michael Cohen committed election, uh, federal election violations upon the orders of Donald Trump. Now, Mershon has given an instruction that the jury is not supposed to attribute Cohen's uh, uh, plea deal as an, an issue of guilt towards Trump. So the defense objected. And Mershon just overruled it. 
and allowed the prosecutor to repeatedly state that federal election violations by Trump are a fact and that there's not any dispute to that. And Mershon just sat there. He was as useful as a ficus plant in that courtroom. It was I kept on waiting, looking at him for some sign that he was even listening to some of these arguments. At one point, the prosecutor said that Hope Hicks burst into tears because she knew that she had destroyed any defense by Donald Trump. Really? How do you know that? At another point, the prosecutor basically started to testify and said that to catch and kill uh, techniques are just not used in the media or politics, that this is beyond anything that the media or political groups have ever done. That's not in the record. He was giving testimony. There was no expert as to that. Hillary Clinton killed and planted cases in that very election. Some of the most outrageous hoaxes were were perpetrated by the Hillary Clinton campaign with an enabling media. And in fact, many of those reporters listening helped the Hillary campaign do that. And so that's what was so otherworldly about today. And I can't imagine a jury member going into deliberations and not assuming that it is an established fact that federal election law violations have occurred in this case because the Trump has allowed the prosecutors to say it dozens of times. So you're saying that the jury now has been told dozens of times these payments were campaign violations. The judge let that false claim stand uncontradicted. Now, I don't know what to infer from that, because I agree with you that hearing that, and of course, when the defense tried to object, they were overruled almost every time until the end. They got, you know, a bone throw to, thrown to them once or twice, probably because the judge was tired. But short of that, it was allowed in. It was allowed to be stated as fact. Now, what does that mean, not just for the jury, but for the outcome for a potential appeal if there was a conviction? Well, you know, some of what the prosecutors said, I hope the jury views is obviously ridiculous. And at one point, the prosecutor said that when Michael Cohen went into a bank to send a financial transaction and wrote something untrue, that Trump must have known that. Well, how many clients know how their attorneys frame a financial transfer in a bank? I mean, that's how really sort of overextended the prosecutors were. But the main problem here is still that the judge has allowed this erroneous assumption to be reinforced. There is no federal election contribution violation here. It is, and, and the judge stopped a federal a, a legal expert who would have said that. And so when they go into that room, they're going to start with that proposition, and that's going to take them a long way. Now, does that mean that it's a it's a lead pipe cinch for conviction? No. I think what it means is that the chances of an acquittal are diminishing to the point of vanishing. But I think there's still a chance of a hung jury. If any of these jurors just say, you know what, none of this holds together. I mean, you also had all these witnesses saying that, you know, this designation was made by an antiquated drop down menu that listed things as legal expenses. Um, and where's Weisenberg, Weiselberg? They keep on referring to this guy, but he's not being brought in. And when they quoted Trump in this closing argument, it was Cohen quoting Trump. So I, I, I'm hoping uh, that one of these jurors or two are going to say, look, I think that we're being played for chumps here. There you go, uh, Jonathan uh, Turley. And that was two nights ago before the jury instructions uh, came out, which is when the judge... Again, the judge allowed lie after lie after lie after lie uh, to be put in, and the judge knew they were lies. And then when he gave the instructions, that's where the judge lied himself. He was enabling lies, which is reprehensible, from the prosecution consistently. And then in the jury instructions, he also lied about you know what the law is. And the law certainly isn't that the prosecution can bring up what the the crime the other crime is in a generic way without actually stating or providing the facts or not giving the defense the opportunity to rebut 
that. And that's where, again, the lie from the judge came in, which is why it's just so reprehensible. Like I said, it, you, Turley said it. Now, he's a couple of years y- younger than I am, Jonathan Turley, but he said it. Because never, not only has he never seen anything, he's never read anything. And I guess that meant either fiction or nonfiction of anything this ridiculous. And it's just, I mean, this is as bad as it gets. You know, I think of all the, the, all the things that I've covered in my 35 years of uh, full, a uh, full 35 years come this, uh, this October. And I've been covering the news. I've been a talk show host for 35 years, but in this business for 42 years where I've been over actually managed news departments. Uh, and I've never seen anything like this. And as Turley said, he, and, and he's, uh, you know, a historian too, when it comes to the constitution, he said, I've never seen anything like this. I've never read anything like this. This is an abomination. Democrats, any Democrat who believes in the law should be screaming, and you hear no Democrats screaming about it. None. Zero. They all are okay with it. But when we laid out where the Democratic Party has gone, everything from open borders, the border is secure. Uh, critical race theory, that, uh, you know, the their belief, and they're pushing that all whites are culturally racist. The entire thing of attacking conservative blacks happened again the other day. Who said it? Um, was it? Was it? I can't. I can't remember. Was it Joy Reid? And they were talking about Byron Donalds. And I forgot what they forgot what they called him. The uh, basically the black guy who's being manipulated by Republicans because blacks who do not agree with the Democratic Party are viewed as not having a mind of their own and only obeying the white conservative, which is racist as hell because it's the belief from Democrats that all blacks must think alike and all whites think alike. I mean, they are blatantly racist, blatantly misogynist with the their position on the radical transgender movement, lying consistently about what's been going on at the southern border. Uh, you know, I read you the the uh, the uh, the Boston mayor, Boston mayor, you know, filling out that filling out the paper for the liberal groups, believes prosecutions for th- uh, for theft shouldn't happen. On a number of range of crimes, just don't charge anybody. We know about Bragg. We know about what's going on in New York State. They don't believe in the law. They don't believe in the rule of law. If they could get away with it, they would defund all the police. We, we know they've made that clear. Then backed off when they went, we defunded the poli- we defunded the police. And guess what? The social workers that were supposed to replace the police couldn't get the job done. We thought social. Remember we went through that pile of crap a few years back? Well, if we only had social, if we had the social workers out there. You know, social workers should be the ones responding to domestic domestic calls. Yeah, that sounds good. There's When there's a domestic call and someone's screaming in the background, That's not a tense situation where a firearm may be needed. Jeez. These people are just, they're nuts. And I know everybody tries to explain it. I don't know if I can explain it. I don't know. Because they end up up hurting the people that they claim they care about. And now the people they claim they care about are starting to say, wait a minute, maybe you don't care about me. Maybe you wish for me to live a perpetual life of hell because then you believe that you'll say you're a victim and I can help you. 
So you're keeping your own job by telling me I'm a victim. I don't have the potential to make it in life. And then you make my life a living hell by ensuring that there isn't enough police protection, that inflation is kicking the crap out of us. But you just believe that I'm an idiot if I'm a Democrat. And then I'll sit there and can't connect the dots and keep voting for you as you make my life a living hell. And then I get to claim that I'm still a victim. But you know something? My life's still a living hell five years later. And that's why when you heard minorities at the Trump rally in Bronx saying, we don't want a handout. We want opportunity. Trump gave us opportunity. That's why you have blacks and other minorities moving away from the Democratic Party. Not quick enough, but still starting to move away. Who was it, that singer? John, I can't think of it. Uh, He was on MSNBC saying that uh, blacks who won't vote for Biden, moving away from Biden, they're just ignorant. They really don't know what's going on. See? If you move away from the Democratic Party, you're just an idiot. You don't know what's going on. You're ignorant. You're stupid. You don't know. John Legend. On MSNBC, I just realized who it was. You're, You're stupid. Because the Democratic Party is telling you that if you are an autonomous individual and you think on your own, then you're not truly black and something's wrong with you. How dare you have a mind of your own? So people that believe that, well, we know they don't believe in the Constitution. They don't believe in the First Amendment. They don't believe. They want the Second Amendment completely gone. They don't believe in the separation of powers. They don't believe in the Electoral College. They don't want to have a Senate. So like I said, this all makes sense. 866-90-RED-EYE. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. He's Eric Harley. Coming up on the top of the hour, more on uh, the uh, the possibility. Could a verdict come down t- today? I, I know one of the things is uh, the, uh, the jury seems, because there's so many jury instructions, and they can't take over 50 pages of jury instructions, that they keep going back to the judge going, we need clarification here. And here and here, they're going to start out today with more clarification of the jury orders. Instructions. Orders. <laughs> this is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning off. You and me this morning. And I was thinking... I know that most of the people I've talked to in the last week about this, uh, about the whole Trump case, are conservative and they've actually been paying attention. But I just wonder if you would get a blank look from any Democrat if you went to them and said, well, yeah, but Trump's defense didn't even know what the crime was that makes it a felony until the closing arguments when the prosecution said uh, what the crime what said what the generic crime was without specifically identifying what portion of it it was. And the defense never had a chance to rebut it. And they'd probably say, what are you talking about? 
That doesn't happen in a court of law in the United States. Yeah, it does. Which is why if Trump is convicted, he will immediately appeal. Here's Alan Dershowitz talking about who he should appeal to. He has to assume, Trump does, that a jury in New York might very well convict, at least on some of the charges. And he should be ready immediately to uh, take an expedited appeal, to argue to the prosecution, to argue to the court, to the appellate division, and ultimately the Court of Appeals and maybe the Supreme Court, more likely the state courts, say that, look, they rushed this case to trial because they wanted it before the election. Now we're going to rush the appeal because we want the appeal before the election. It's not fair to have a down and dirty conviction that is likely to be reversed on appeal. And then the appeal gets reversed only after the election. So I would immediately be pushing very hard for an appeal. Alan Dershowitz uh, yesterday. And I guess the thing is, everybody was speculating what the judge would do. But when the judge actually did it, it was still like, wow. Not that you're surprised, but it's like, wow, he actually did it. He actually he actually lied to the jury and made up what this case is about. And it's not about any law. It's not about <laughs> it's it's not about any law that we know of, and not even any law of New York State. That was brought up by a couple of people yesterday saying this is not the law of New York State. The law of New York State does not say that the prosecution can not tell the defense until the very end when they can't rebut it what the actual crime is. And when they say what the crime is and there is no crime, but the judge has allowed the prosecution over and over again to say that there was a federal elections violation and then the judge to allow that in the jury instructions that they could they could find him that that they could uh, choose among three areas of crimes to convict him of and it doesn't have to be unanimous that some can pick one crime the others can pick another crime has that ever been done in american court history well and uh, Mark Levin uh, had a tweet yesterday vi- that uh, the uh, judge directed the jury that they should choose among three areas of crimes to convict the former president. Number one, violations of federal election law, which uh, no one in that courtroom is familiar with. And the judge specifically prevents Brad Smith, who was the expert from the uh, uh, on election law, from testifying about it. The falsification of business records, which, again, there is no evidence of falsification of records. It's between Trump and his personal attorney. Just amazing. Tax violations. I don't know the tax violations. Those weren't set out. Did they say there were tax violations? I don't know of any tax violations that Trump had in all of this. Because that would have been key. And uh, Levin writes, uh, moreover, the federal campaign violation still has not been defined. So it's just, um, it's amazing. I just, you just shake your head. It's so obvious that this is a crooked judge and a crooked prosecutor. Normally, if I would say that, you know, if you say that in in a case, you'd have Democrats screaming. Democrats, like I said, the only thing the Democrats really could do was Andrew Weissman yesterday on MSNBC talking about the man crush that he had for the judge. So... And our thing is, could you save that to Pride Week or Pride Month coming up? <laughs> oh my God, I just—it's just so—it's so stupid, and yet it's so yet it's so critical. I can't believe we're actually talking about this; that it actually gets to this point. And I keep going back. To Kevin O'Leary saying they've got to make immunity for a president now. Everything except murder. 
because they will do anything to go after the opposition. Because if you can jail the opposition or you, you, you can jail the opposition by making up crimes, then you don't live in a constitutional republic anymore. It's gone. And that's what's happening here. And when they can commit this election, clear election interference, and you have a judge and prosecution lying to the jury over and over again, this nation is in deep trouble because this isn't going to go away. It's not going to go away. Let's head to you. We go to Nate in Phoenix. Nate, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi, Nate. Hey, good uh, good, uh, good morning to you. Good morning. I, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I had, a, I had a, a different perspective of some you had said earlier about uh, what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, when you create chaos, uh, you create a, 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 a sense of uh scariness and make people want to be concerned and so they're going to react in a different way but you're doing that just so you control them more because they're going to give up those uh those those freedoms that we have and that's the craziest part to me is that we continue to want to give up our freedoms but we don't want to hold why are we not grasping that why are we not saying you guys are fools let us the people control it and that's what we continue to happen it's foolish well uh again i would i would agree that there are many people who wish to give up their freedom for security you know that the democrats have been successful on that the and and i do agree with you that many democrats and liberals believe that by sowing this chaos and i'd mentioned this earlier uh, that by sowing the chaos, they can continue to go back to their constituents and say, see, everything is crumbling around you. Don't look at me because I'm causing it. Spending inflation to fund the police, crime in your area, uh, uh, identity politics, racism, make you suspicious of people of other races. Yeah, they believe that their goal is they can make you, and we've talked about this many times before, you might be a new listener if you if you had some thought that, that we haven't been on that path because we've been on that path for a long time. The pathology of dependency, we can control you because you're an eternal victim and you'll always be a victim. Now, hey, look the other way. <laughs> Don't pay attention to me behind the curtain because I'm the one creating the legislation and promoting and telling you you're a victim and you can't make it. So I can keep spending money and then I am the one that gets to control you and you will keep me in power. The only thing is it doesn't work in the real world. That's an abstract concept. The whole thing of now you have Many people in the inner city saying for all the trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars spent, we're, we're, not, seeing any, we're not seeing any improvement. Our lives isn't, aren't better. In fact, you know when our lives were better? Our lives were better. You, you heard this at the Trump trial, or the Trump, uh, not the Trump trial, the Trump Bronx rally. You know, trillions of dollars. You're going to give us money, give us money, give us money. We don't want the money from the government that causes inflation. We want opportunity. Trump gave us opportunity. Trump made sure there were jobs so then we could have jobs and then we control our own life. That's the fallacy of liberalism. It's a fallacy of Marxism and communism is the fact that the abstract that we're all in this together to share and redistribute income. The only thing is, you see the mess we're in today? Democrats, you see the crappy mess we're in? It's because you bought into that. Many people buy into that. They buy into the abstract that government can take care of me. Government can take care of you. We're seeing it now. And they actually don't wish to take care of you. They wish 
if you're a Democrat, to give you the illusion that they care about you. We're going to give you more money than the Republicans are going to give you. Oops, now we have massive inflation. Well, then we're going to give you more money that will cause more massive inflation. And you know something? Even though you gave me money, the money doesn't match the inflation that it caused. Apparently, something's going wrong here. We're going to protect you by defunding the police, defunding the police, and give you social workers. Who wants social workers to investigate domestic abuse? Yeah. Uh, Critical race theory. You're a victim because of your color. Therefore, if you're a victim, you must think alike and only vote for us. Because if you don't, then we're going to accuse you of being an Uncle Tom. Because we want group think. Think the second Star Trek and the Borg. Everybody has the same mindset. Nobody can deviate. We don't want you to have autonomy. If you're black, you don't have independent thought. You don't have a brain that gives you autonomy and independent thought and critical analysis. You must agree with us that you are a victim, will always be a victim, and we will make your life a living hell and be happy that you get that from us. So... The abstract, people bought into it. And where we are now is liberalism has hit reality, which is why we've said over and over again, the worst enemy of the Democrats and liberalism right now is not the Republican Party. It's reality. You can't change economics. doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Reading the story here about uh, Gavin Newsom backing off on the $25 minimum wage for health care workers. Oops. We said it's going to be great because when we raise the minimum wage, then everybody makes more money, they spend it, and the economy actually does better. It sounds good in the abstract. It's not true. It doesn't happen. And what are they finding out? Oh, it's raising health care costs, and we have a huge deficit, and and so so much of the health care is paid for by <laughs> is is paid by the state that sorry, that twenty five dollar minimum wage goes away. We weren't thinking when we passed the law because we were living in our own little delusional world. By the way, it's the same with Republicans. J.D. Vance out there promoting the fact he was asked a direct question uh, and and uh, uh, you know, about uh, tariffs. And they said, well, tariffs are going to you know increase inflation if you put tariffs in the new Trump administration. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We're protecting jobs. Well, yeah, you can protect jobs of an industry, but you're still of those jobs, but you're going to lose other jobs or the cost of goods and services are going to go up. And as we have stated, and we used to get fight on, we used to get people fighting with us on it. We go, go ahead, fight, live in the abstract, live in the delusional world. You raise the cost of doing business. You decrease competition. Costs will go up. You can protect jobs of a certain industry, but you're going to lose them in other industries and it's going to go up. That's economics. That's not my opinion. It's observing the way the real world runs and how people respond to incentive. It's that simple. Well, that's your opinion. My opinion's different. My opinion doesn't mean anything. It's whether you observe economic reality correctly or not. It's not an opinion. Oh, I think the Bills will win the Super Bowl. See, that's an opinion I've had. That's an opinion. That isn't the observation of reality. <laughs> Was that a good example to give? I think it might have been a good example to give. All right. 866-98-RED-EYE. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at J.J. Keller, and I'm here to share a tip on speed and space management. Due to safety concerns, many motor carriers have policies that limit or prohibit the use of cruise control. If your motor carrier does allow you to use cruise control, you should only use it in good driving conditions during daylight hours and on roads that have light traffic, few curves or hills, and a consistent speed limit. Never use cruise control when operating in adverse driving conditions, including wet, icy, or slippery roads. 
during rush hour in heavy traffic or on congested highways, at night, or when you're tired or fatigued. During all of these driving scenarios, you want to be controlling and adjusting your speed as you drive instead of having to suddenly brake if you encounter an obstacle. In the case of a slippery road surface, you want to be able to slow your vehicle by not accelerating instead of using the brakes whenever possible. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller and Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Eric has the morning off. It's me and you. Oh, I got a, I've got a great audio cut from Biden from yesterday. You'll want to hear it because I'm trying to, I'm analyzing it right now. And I've come up with a, well, I'm not sure where Biden was going with this. So maybe you can help me out. Uh, but first, let's go to Frank in Tennessee about the Trump trial. Frank, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Uh, good morning. I just had a question. I'm just wondering what's to stop Biden if Trump is convicted from saying he refuses to get on a stage in good conscience with a convicted felon. Well, be his way of backing out of the debate. You're asking the right person because I had that theory two days ago. <laughs> There's nothing to stop him from saying that, but we we gave that theory uh, two nights ago that uh, that I bet you Biden will back off or they'll pressure him to back off at the last second, saying, "Well, you, I'm, I'm not going to debate with somebody who is a is a felon. Uh, he doesn't deserve to be running." For president of the United States, so yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for that, though, because uh, we had uh, we had come up with that a couple days ago. Bill in Michigan, Bill, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Hi, Bill. Morning. Hey. Nope, oh, we lost you. <laughs> Sorry, you started talking and then you just lost you completely. Uh, and and uh, Bill was talking wanted to talk about the the whole four four thing four four four, where there are basically three. Uh, sort of gray area, uh, generic uh, crimes that uh, the uh, judge says that the jury can consider uh, and they don't have to be unanimous on it, which, again, I've never heard that ever in any court case either, that you don't have to be unanimous when you attempt to convict someone. It could be this crime, this crime, or this crime. Now, they're all generic and nobody's explained them to you because nobody really brought them up inside the trial, as to specifically how it was against the law. But the fact is, you can have these generic ideas to look at. Yeah, uh, unprecedented. Sorry we couldn't get your... Sorry you uh, didn't have a good cell hook up there. But thank you anyway. And hopefully we address it. And join the conversation. one 90 red eye red Eye radio And I'm Gary McNamara. He's Eric Carly. He has a morning off. I'm here. Uh, download our Red Eye Radio app today. You can listen when and where you choose. If you can, listen live overnight to one of our great radio stations. Hundreds upon hundreds of great radio stations across the United States. You can listen uh, in the morning. Starting in the morning, a few minutes after the show's done, our podcast is up. And so we make it that you can listen all day to Red Eye Radio. All right, so (laughs) Biden had a campaign stop yesterday. And he started talking about how important DEI is. And this is just great because he implies... And Kamala Harris is actually a DEI hire. <laughs> so it's like, did he even know what he was saying when he said it? Well, you have to wonder, did he even know what he was saying? To me, the values of diversity, equality, inclusion are literally, and that's not kidding, the core strengths of America. 
That's why I'm proud to have the most diverse administration in history. It taps into the full talents of our country. And it starts at the top with the vice president. <laughs> she wasn't hired for her qualifications. <laughs> now, is he, here's the question. Is he saying it so he can promote DEI? And if he's attempting to promote DEI as getting the best person in there, is Kamala Harris the example of the best person to hire? I mean, right now, when the debate's going on that Biden has to go and the Democrats themselves are going, but we can't have Kamala Harris. She's an idiot. And then we all know that Biden only made her vice president because, as he said, I'll only have a black woman serve in that role. And no Democrat wants her to be president of the United States. And he's asked the question consistently, can you, he was asked it yesterday. Well, you're a fool. He was all upset about it. Are you going to serve your full four years or will Kamala Harris take over? Now, you know, behind the scenes, he's not pleased with her. We all, you know that, right? I mean, the whole thing, he, he, he gave her the job to, he gave her, he threw her under the bus. He really did. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about it. I care about DEI. Hey, you go out and solve the illegal immigration problem that I caused. But I can't do anything. You caused it with your executive orders. Doesn't matter. Tell them you're going to go out and find the root cause. But solve the problem without reversing any of my executive orders. Well, she couldn't do it, and he got angry. The hell is she doing? I caused it. Why can't she fix it when I can fix it like that? (laughs) So now he's out there promoting the fact that (laughs) DEI is so critically important, and she's a DEI hire. Oh, my God. Or, on the other hand, (laughs) does he know that America and corporations are now moving away from DEI because of the racist aspect of it, and he knows that, and he wishes to protect his standing within the Democratic Party and with independence by saying, Hey, this moron that I put in there, I only put her in there because of this color of her skin and the fact that she's a woman. But we all know she's an idiot. So stop that talk about putting her in instead of me. I'm not sure which it is for Biden. I don't know if Biden knows which it is for him. Uh, I want to play this other uh, this other audio cut here. I had to do some research uh, on it. Did I uh, did I get the? I think I. Well, I'll I'll just I'll do it from memory because I I wasn't prepared to go for it. But it's the next audio cut that's actually lined up, and I want to make sure I get it in. Uh, this is um, from the California State Senate, and this is. Let me see if I can get her name here. I had it and then I lost it here. Hang on a second here. Um, oh, jeez. Did I get did I get the sheet from over there? Is it on the printer? No, it's not. Okay, then I I did. It's, it's in it's in here. There's a a state senate bill, uh, and this is because it was reversed. So I didn't when I read the article, they didn't say why it was reversed, but I'm guessing it was reversed. A couple of uh, of uh, well, it was this was put into law a couple of months ago that uh, for prostitution, uh, you know, prostitution having you know uh, illegal sex, you know, with a a minor for prostitution's sake was eighteen and and, and under, and they came in and uh, the Democrats came in and said, okay, sixteen and seventeen is fine. Well, there was such an outcry that they're looking to reverse it. And this is a, and I don't have it here, or maybe I'll find it during it, but this is one of a Democrat state uh, Senate uh, senator, uh, a woman there, I'll get her name in a second, who came out and said she can't go along with where the Democrats are going anymore. 
she was just stunned and went against her own party. And listen to this. Here we go. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and uh, members. Um, I'd like to say as a, as a progressive proud member of this body for the last 12 years, I'm done. I'm done with us protecting people who would buy and abuse our children. I'm done. Okay, Senator Susan Eggman is who it is. Okay, continue. Done. I don't want to send more black and brown men to prison. I don't want more people in prison, but I don't want people buying girls. I don't want people buying little girls anymore. And I'm tired of saying it's okay and that we have to protect the men who do it. As a mental health professional and as a social worker, I can tell you I've spent my entire career working with people who have been wounded I'm not going to say beyond repair, but they have been wounded to their core by the abuse that's been heaped on them, oftentimes by those that they love and look to protect them. And if their parents won't do it, then by God, we should. Again, I am not arguing that we open the gates to flood our prisons with people, but I am arguing that we have a moral responsibility to say enough, enough. We have given away enough on this area and we've got to move back into the center or we all look like fools and laughing stocks. And what do we stand for? I ask all of you to watch the documentary that Senator uh, Grove was in, Senator from Kern County who was just in, that talked about this very place in Sacramento where girls are being bought and sold. Men are being given a little slap in the hand or a couple days and then they're back out again and they do the same thing. They get caught over and over and over again and somehow that's okay. It's not okay. It is not okay anymore. And no, no more am I watching. Like I said, I'm leaving, but the rest of you who are going to be here for a while, let's get our stuff together and really start focusing on some of the important things. We talk about learning and we talk about being safe. This is like at the core of it. And a lot of these kids can be throwaway kids. They're poor kids. They're kids of color. But they shouldn't have to live a life determined by what happens to them by others at a very young age and by how the Democratic Party of California say it's okay. It's not okay. And I'm not doing it anymore, and I hope none of you do too. We have to be able to draw a line. And for me, I'm drawing a line. I urge your I vote. I mean, that's the insanity of where it's gotten. You can see how upset she is. That's the modern Democratic Party. Again, I don't have to say how radical it is. Democrats who have woke up have said this is unbelievable. And if you look at the Trump case, you can look at everyone. All of the people, the best people that are looking at the legal aspects of this abomination of a court case against Trump, all of them that are looking at it are anti-Trump. All of them. And that would be Dershowitz, Turley, and Andrew McCarthy. Now, I think Andrew McCarthy may be a Republican, but he does not support Trump at all. The other two are lifelong Democrats. And Dershowitz is as was as liberal as you could get. I'm thinking about when I first started in talk radio back in 89, and it was like Dershowitz was viewed as so left-wing. And now Dershowitz has become the voice of legal reason for the Democrats. It's just, uh, it's just unbelievable. But uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that I played that audio cut because there, you know, I, I wonder how she feels about men playing uh, in women's sports. How she feels about men defining what uh, a woman in woman is. I wonder what she feels, Senator Eggman, uh, about the fact that a Supreme Court justice, Justice Jackson, had no idea what a woman was could not identify what a woman was. I wonder if Senator Eggman approves of the misogyny and the threats and the bullying of women who wish to play sports with other women. Oh! Where did I put it here? Hang on, I got something else for you. (laughs) Everything leads to something else. Every, the the court case was dominating so much. There were other things yesterday that I saw that I went, oh, I've got to make sure I play that. Uh, hang on here. Hang on. Hang on. Don't don't uh, raise any volumes yet on this. i got to see if I can uh, find this here because I was like, okay, I think I can use this. 
uh, for my, um, oh, I can't yet because I can't control it. Uh, I'll see if I can get it here in a little bit. But, oh, no, wait a minute. There it is. Uh, okay, let me start again. Hang on. It's worth it. I'm telling you it's worth it. 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 Uh, okay, here we go. This is, and we could use this uh, uh, for our radical uh, liberal transgender activist movement update. Mr. Rogers. You ready for this? Going back, Mr. Rogers uh, on a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. Our girls right from the start. When you're born a girl baby, you grow up to be a bigger girl and then a woman. Only girls can grow up to be the mummies. Only boys can grow up to be the daddy. Everybody's fancy. Everybody's fine. If you were born a boy, you stay a boy. Girls are girls right from the start. When you're born a girl baby, you grow up to be a bigger girl and then a woman. Only girls can grow up to be the mummies. Only boys can grow up to be the daddy. Everybody's fancy. Everybody's fine. Mr. Rogers, hate mongerer. 866-90-RED-EYE. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. 